Lapsang Topgal is a former monk living with his family in the Tibetan colony of Mungad in southern India. His father came out of Tibet with the Dalai Lama in 1959. It was here that Lapsang's family rebuilt their lives and their home with their own hands, often battling the extreme heat and monsoons that claimed thousands of Tibetan lives. At the Janshub Choling Nunnery, we were introduced to Sering Doma. She was the first student at the nunnery 19 years ago. Today, she is its director. The nunnery houses 160 women. They are educated in language, science, and the subjects of basic education, along with studies in Buddhist philosophy. Sering explained that many of the nuns who came into exile sought the solitude and safety of the nunnery after being tortured by the Chinese government, simply because of their desire to be Tibetan. Like all Tibetan organizations, they cope well on their own, and through the structure of the Tibetan community, along with the help from around the world, they manage to have the basics, but there is always a need for more help. A visit by outsiders to the southern Tibetan colonies is highly restricted, but with the help of Lobsang and his friend Adu, we gained access to places rarely seen by Westerners. This is the Gandhian monastery. There are two parts, one Changzi, we see the outside the Changzi monastery. Now this is the Sharzi monastery for the Tibetan business. Tibet calls the morning and evening. So all the monastery. This is all, all the Gandhian monastery, but they are the two two part monastery. One is Gandhian Changzi monastery, one is Gandhian Sharzi monastery. No? Now this is the Changzi monastery. This is a new temple. Yeah, the Sharzi monastery is upside. tradition of Tibetans to live in extended families and the elders share homes with their children. But some Tibetans have no families. Bob Sang took us to a senior care center that is at least able to provide the basics, something not often found in the overwhelming poverty of India. three extraordinary days, Lobsang and Adu tried to give us a complete view of life in the colonies, and it was not without surprises. One team is monk, one team is lay people, lay in monk. A red one is monk, another one is lay people.
Lobsang first contacted the Tibetan Photo Project by email. He included a few simple photos and demonstrated a passion for helping the world understand life in exile. Lobsang is neither technically trained or skilled in photography, and yet he has recorded the heart of the Tibetan people on film. Lobsang works with a donated Nikon camera. He is constantly after us to send him enlargements, and working with clothesline and clips, he hangs exhibits of his work, using photography as a voice that does not need translation.